The process of turning a real human into a virtual human begins with conceptual art to establish the appropriate look and feel of the character. From the concepts, a real human model is cast in the role of the character. The model is brought to the ICT's graphics lab to have her face captured and translated into a 3D model on the computer. Markers are drawn on the model's face to serve as reference points during the capture process. The model sits within the light stage device, which uses high-speed projectors and cameras that scan minute details of the model's face and turns them into a dense mesh of 3D geometry. This dense facial mesh is too complex for the computer to handle, so an artist optimizes it into a lower density mesh, which can be displayed in real time in the graphics engine. Special texture maps, called normal maps, are derived from the dense face mesh and applied to the low res mesh to give the illusion that it has more details and wrinkles than it actually does. Similarly, the artist sculpts the clothing in the computer, kind of like sculpting in clay, but digitally, and uses the finished sculpture to also generate normal maps for the clothes. This combination of normal maps, color textures, and careful modeling allows the character to animate smoothly while still appearing to be highly detailed. The ICT's Natural Language Understanding Group creates the artificial intelligence that enables the characters to understand what humans say and respond appropriately. The process begins by creating a list of possible questions that people might ask the characters. Similar questions are grouped together and linked to appropriate answers. When you ask a question, speech recognition software processes your voice and interprets what you said. A statistical classifier then selects which answer to play back. To allow the character to develop and learn, each new question is recorded and later processed to teach the character new responses. A voice actress is cast to provide the responses that the virtual characters will speak when asked questions. She works with the director to develop the personality and quirks for each of the characters. After the character is finished being modeled and the voice has been recorded, the animator connects the model to a skeleton that can be deformed and posed. The animator sets keys to sync up with the recorded audio. At this point, the characters begin to come alive. The characters are projected on a special paraholographic transparent screen that makes them float in 3D space, and users can ask questions of the characters using a microphone. All of these elements combine to create the illusion that you're actually interacting with a real human. Hello. Hey there. How can we help you? What are your jobs here? My name's Ada, and I'm Grace. We're your virtual museum guides. We help visitors like you understand more about computers, robots, and communications. Oh, where are you from? One of the computers behind us is our current home, but we move a lot. Actually, we can be many places at once. But the first time our integrated executables were fired up was in California. Even so, our development was completely bi-coastal, from C to shining C++. Do you have boyfriends? Why? Is there another virtual human you think we should meet? I hope they're into neural networks and amino acid sequences. <laughs> Grace, what's wrong with just charming and generous? All right, that's all. Goodbye. Thanks for coming by. Have a great time with all the exhibits at Computer Place.